Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 137 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where I'm playing with modular routers, and I've got a thing. You ready? Carrots. Confit baldi. Steak. Carrots. Confit baldi. Steak. How did we set up this cool thing with modular routers? Well, I'm gonna show you. Um, so last episode we started playing with the Gormalus. Uh, it's a special kind of flower that needs to be fed a variety of foods. Um, now, I'm, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is just feed it like a whole variety of foods, like a whole bunch of different kinds of food. Uh, that's kind of my plan. Um, let's get some more potatoes. I think five. Does five sound like enough variety for Mr. Picky Eater? He's For, for a flower, he's a very picky eater. And I feel like five is enough. Um, you know... So, so that's a thing. Let's do baked potatoes. That looks cool. Yes. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to set this up um, today. I've also gone ahead and read some information using my handy dandy block reader right here. Uh, we read the tile entity data and it's being displayed on the screen. This is all the tile entity data that it has. Now there's a couple important uh, notes that you can see here. Uh, the ones that I'm gonna pay attention to are mana. That's how much mana is currently in the flower. And then also, I think cooldown um, is how long the food is being eaten for. So if I drop a piece of chicken on there, see the cooldown number? As soon as it's done eating, it goes to negative one. So cooldown negative one means I've finished eating, okay? And also look at mana, right? So if I drop a carrot on there now, when mana is zero, that's another important thing. I'll do the, the big food. So see how much longer the cooldown takes? And then there's your mana amount. So what I'm thinking I wanna do, what I'm thinking I wanna do is drop food on the Gormalaeus when cooldown is negative one and mana is zero. If either of those are untrue, then we'd, we don't wanna drop food, okay? So that's the condition on which I'm gonna drop food. And then I'm going to use a redstone writer to emit a redstone pulse to the item router here when those conditions are true. So basically, when mana is zero and cooldown is negative one, emit a redstone pulse, hit the item router, the item router will pull the next item in sequence, and then Bob's your uncle. How cool is that? That's my plan for automating the Gormalaeus. It's what I've come up with uh, between episodes here. So let's go ahead and set that up lickety split. Um, so there's a few ways, obviously, uh, that we can set this up. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, <clears throat> what I'm thinking is uh, I might have the modular router sit on top of the Gormalis. Gorm, gor, gor, Gormarillis. I can words, I promise. I promise I can words. And then we're gonna have a redstone writer here. Let's get one of those bad boys. Boop. Um, so that's cool. So how did we get this guy sequencing? Well, let me show you, cause it's neat old Dorito. Boop. Um, there is a new module, brand new, I think, as of the current version of modular routers called the filter round robin augment. And if we look at the details of that, instead of the default any or all behavior, the module will match against a single item from its filter on each execution tick. The item to be matched is picked in ascending round robin order. Useful to work on a series of items in a specific order. <laughs> exactly what we're looking to do exactly what we're looking to do right here. So it's really simple. You go ahead and you drop your filter round robin aug augment into the polar module. Um, you add your items that you want to filter on, and then what'll happen is it'll pull them in order on each subsequent pull, right? So I'm gonna just ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop all this stuff, right? And now what would be smart for me right now is to make sure that we probably have an equal amount of these. Now what'll happen is, what'll happen is, um, if it's missing an item, it'll just move on to the next. So it's not the end of the world, right? Not a big deal. Um, so, but you know, also if we're missing all but one of the item, it'll just keep using the one item over and over again, which again, not the end of the world, but something we want to avoid. So chicken and carrots right now are all we need. Carrots and chicken, probably some cooked chicken wouldn't be a terrible idea. You know, I can access this from the back because I have a messy base. 
but I'd like to have an equal number of items in the chest just for my own sanity. <clears throat> just for my own sanity, right? So there we go. A stack of each, right? Nope, I need more. Yeah, my, my carrots. Duh. <clears throat> there we are. Nice. So that's a pretty neat gadget, right? So now what we want to do is test the pulse mechanic of this, right? So um, all we have to do is give it a redstone pulse and it'll drop one of the items. There we go. It just did the confit galdi, which it happened to be the last one I fed it. So it's a little bit of a slow eat, but that's okay, right? And we can see that that guy is doing his job. Now, if I hit the button again, why did you do confit galdi again? That's not what you should have done. There you go. We'll hope that this behaves itself. Now, why are you suddenly doing two at a time? This was working perfectly a second ago. This was literally working perfectly a second ago. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to reset this thing and just... Try it again. I had all the numbers lined up perfectly. Killing me, Smalls. All right, so we're gonna do you. You're bound. You're gonna be this. You're gonna be configured. You're gonna be this. And then we're going to want one of each. Boom, 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 boom. All right, configure you. These guys, cool, cool, cool. Any item in the filter will match for the milk that use us under most circumstances, all. I guess, yeah, I guess this just overrides that, so it shouldn't matter. All right, so let's try this. Uh, I'm going to remove the Gormalus now because I don't want it to actually do the thing. So confit, confit, confit. What's going on? Steak, steak, steak. Killing me, Smalls. This worked so perfectly five seconds ago. What if I removed a couple of these and it was just the top three? Um, Bueller? Why is my button stuck? Am I crazy? Carrots? Drop her down, polar module. Oh, because it's in it's in blacklist mode? How's it in blacklist mode? Yeah, you should be in whitelist mode, right? Um, and then you're gonna want your beef and your compete. Maybe that's the problem? For some reason it was in blacklist mode and it was being funny about it. Um That's the only explanation I have. Let's try this again. Whitelist, yes. Ignore NBT, match any, match item damage. I'll ignore item damage. You're being weird, item router. Five seconds ago you were working, explain. All right, now it's working when it's on redstone mode always. For some reason, pulsed mode isn't working, I guess. Oh, now it's behaving. Look, and now it's doing it in order. Now it's doing, okay. I think something just weird happened. I can't explain in what way it was weird, but it was something weird. But yes, that's the gist. I think it was something, something redstone-y weird. But now what should happen is we should do one, and it eats the chicken. And that time it got the potato. And that time it got the carrot. And that time it got the steak. And this time it got the confit bialdi. Sweet. That is cool beans, right? How cool is that? And it runs on redstone pulse. So now all we need to do is say, hey, find out what the mana value is, find out what the cooldown value is, 
compare them, and if they're happy, then do the thing. So let's do that real quick with integrated dynamics, because that's fun. Uh, so what we're gonna do is put away the button and the extra food that I have, and then we're going to grab our this thingy, and we're going to take, there's actually, there's, there's a block I wanna try. Uh, the MBT extractor. It's an add-on mod to integrated dynamics called integrated MBT, and I'd like to see how this works. Um, I just want to see how this works. I don't know if it needs to be connected to a network. Welcome, this is an MBT extractor. To start, place a variable of type MBT into the left slot. Okie dokie, Smokey. So that would be you. Error. Oh, uh, I might need to actually connect you to the cable. Boop, boop. Hello, yes. Greetings, sir. Look at this fanciness. Wow, this is cool. So you can see the last five foods it ate, which is neat. That's cool. So does that mean that's, does it only track the last five? So what we can do to validate that is I'll throw just like an uncooked potato at it. Minecraft potato, yes. So it only tracks five foods. That's interesting to note. You know why that's interesting to note? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Oh no, wait, six? To track the last six foods, is that what's happening here? Let's throw raw beef at it. Yes, it tracks the last six foods, because including the zero, right? So does that mean six foods would be the perfect kind of thing? Because if it only tracks six foods, we might as well throw six foods at it. Like, do apples sound good? Should we just throw, we could throw apples in there. Um, is there another, how about just raw uh, pork chops? We'll do, we'll do uh, cooked pork chops are good, right? Yeah, let's add cooked pork chops to the list. So I'm just gonna smoke up another stack of them. Boop, boop. I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna configure you to include raw pork chop. Now you're doing six items at a time. So because I'm reading the MBT, I'm assuming what this means is that it only tracks the last six items that you feed it, right? Um, we can see what fell off was the cooked chicken, right? So that tells me in theory, if it's only tracking the last six foods, six is the variety that it wants, okay? Um, so then what, do I click on mana? Path selected, place a variable in the right slot to it. Oh, that's cool. Boop. Oh man, that is cool. And can I just pop you right in there? Oh, I like, I like, I do. I like this a lot. Now, where's my labeler? It might be in here. Why, yes it is. So you're gonna be Flower mana, right, cool, flower mana. So that's how much mana the flower currently has, right? And then if we choose cooldown, just left click on it, and we label you flower cooldown, right? Sweet. <laughs> Dire likes. That is a fancy block right there. Can we just talk about how great that is? That is cool. Now, does this need to remain in there? Or can it just go in here? It can just go in there. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure. So this is just a helper block. What do these buttons do? Auto refresh on. Ooh, I like that. Auto output mode, reference mode. Output mode controls how the output value is being created. In reference mode, output values are being created with a reference to the source MBT value. In operator mode, the extraction process is encoded into an operator that accepts MBT and returns the extracted value. In value mode, the value present is written to the output variable as a constant. Oh, that's cool. In MBT path mode, the extraction process is encoded into a Cyclops core MBT path string. If you don't understand this, stick with reference mode. I'm sticking with reference mode because I absolutely do not understand this. I have no idea what any of that means. Value mode sounds useful because it'll just save me the trouble of manually creating a zero and a negative one value, but like, that's cool. So then what I'm gonna do is, so this is the flower cooldown. This is the flower mana, right? So now let's do the following. 
Okay, boop a doop, boop a doop, sorting, and cool. All right, so now we're gonna do an integer value of negative one, boop, okay, and an integer value of zero, boop, okay. And then we're gonna want a um, equals condition, and we're gonna say if the flower cooldown equals negative one, and we are going to flower cooled. Cool. And then we're going to say if flower mana equals zero, then the flower is empty, right? So this card represents if the flower is completely cooled down. This card is, is representing if the flower is completely empty. And they're both true and false, right? And then we're going to say and Boolean logic. So if the flower is cooled and the flower is empty, then it will be flower hungry is what I'll call that variable. He's ready to eat. Cool. So if I put all these booleans in here and we do this, the flower is hungry. Now if I feed it a confit biadi, a fancy food, check this out. The flower won't be hungry again until it's both done eating and empty of mana. See, staying false, when the mana bursts stop, it should flip to true. Buddies. Now remember, the, the mana spreader itself can retain some mana, so that's why there was an extra burst or two. But that is cool. I like, I like the MBT extractor. It makes extracting MBT values really easy. Like, I've gotten good at it because I've done but wow, that was easy. Wow, that was easy. I've done it enough without that block that, like, I'm okay at it. But even so, like, remember you had to, like, create the strings and do the MBT and, like, all the lookups? It was one click. That was so amazing. If you guys have seen me do MBT manipulation with integrated dynamics before and you said to yourself, that was too hard, look at the integrated MBT mod. Because that just made that so much easier. Holy cow. That is cool, bananas. All right, so now we just take this true card and we insert it into here, and then we're gonna say flower hungry. Cool. It's working. And then when the flower empties, it's gonna drop another food in there. How great is that? And I added the, yes, I added the raw, the cooked pork chop there. So that's good times, right? Dudes, this is cool. Dudes, this is cool. How cool is this? I love it. I love it. All right. I'm a very pleased Dyer. Can you tell? Can you tell Dyer's very pleased? Um, now, here's the other trick. Here's the other cool part about this build. Um, with the flowers... If the mana spreader is full, because the pool is full, the flower won't empty its mana. So, when we back stuff on mana, and the pool is completely full of mana, eventually the mana spreader will fill up, and the flower will not be able to empty its mana. So, it will never be mana equals zero, so it will never send another food item in. Right? Right? How great is that? It works perfectly. I love it. All right, cool. So FYI, I've just disabled the eating and burping sounds uh, that the flower makes because after a while that gets a little tedious. Uh, next plan, let's get to it. I would like to make the entropinium. I'm just gonna need two red, two gray, two white, wrath and fire. So let's add wrath to our to-do list. That's gonna be earth and winter. I don't think I have any winter runes at the moment. That's going to be earth and water, cake, 
wool, two snow blocks, right? So we're gonna do cake, wool, two snow blocks. Cake, wool, two snow blocks, earth and water, right? Do I not have a rune of water? I may not have a rune of water. Well, it sounds like we're about to make a rune of water. Yes, because we don't have one of those yet. Uh, rune of water was, oh, let's see if I can remember. Fishing rod, sugar cane. Uh, what else is it? What else is it, Direwolf? You should know this. Bone meal. I did not know this, said the narrator. He did not know that. Uh, I mean, I did, but I forgot it. And I wasn't going to remember it. So fishing rod. And sugar cane. And then just a mana. Dude and dude. Cool. And then some living rocks. I'm going to need a few of them. And we're going to need a couple mana diamonds while we're here, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. Sweet. All right, you should be good. Hey. Excellent. Okay, so Rune of Water, good. And then it was Water and Earth for Winter with you, you, and you. Cool. And then Wrath is going to be Earth with two mana diamonds. Cool. So I should get the Earth back from this. And I'll use that for the two mana diamonds. Cool. So, two mana diamonds, winter, and earth. And that'll be wrath. And then we need fire. Put the waters away. And then we're going to need two red, two gray, two white. Two red. And two gray. Right? Yep, looks good to me. All right, so then fire, wrath. Perfect. Boop, boop, boop. And a seed. Hooray, we've got Entropinium. Now this one's fun. Uh, now what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna make another spreader here. Because uh, remember, the mana spreader, and, and we're probably going to want another potency lens. Just because. Let's get some iron here. Half a stack-ish, sound good? It's fire for potency, right? Did I just use up my last fire lens? I think I did. Yes. All right. So let's get another wart. Brick and gunpowder. Get some more mana. Steel and powder. And then the last living rock that I've got, which I should consider automating at some point, but... We've done man. We've we've done some of these automations before in other series, so I'm like, eh. So close. All right. So then that would be potency lens ready to go. How did that even happen? I couldn't even tell you. All right, so you're gonna go there, buddy boy, and you're gonna get your Entropinium ready to roll. Now, if we check this out, he's bound to him. Now, let me check something here, because I'm not sure if it's going to recognize Tiny TNT. I guess I need some kind of Certus Dust to make Tiny TNT from here, so the Crusher can do that. Which one of you guys is a Crusher? Smelting, compressing, Crushing Factory. Crushing Factory. 
Does Tiny TNT work? I've actually never tested this. Well, I mean, I think I probably have tested this, but not in 116. Oh, it does. Excellent. Now, here's the follow-up question to that. Is it different than normal TNT? In terms of the amount of mana it generates. I'm going to say not much. I mean, it doesn't feel like it, right? It doesn't feel like it, right? I don't think so. Yeah. I would say... I would say that's doable. I would say that's doable. Alright, so here's the deal. Um, remember with the Entropinium. Okay, important, important reminder about the Entropinium. Uh, it consumes the explosion so that it doesn't do any damage to blocks. However, however, um, it doesn't like it if it already has mana in it. Okay. Uh, if the explosion, the flower must have not have any mana stored in it. Otherwise, explosions as usual. So, in other words, if there's mana in the flower and the TNT explodes, <clears throat> bad, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we're going to avoid letting that happen. Um, so let's do this. Let's, um, have a similar setup over here to read how much mana is in the flower, and as long as mana equals zero, you're allowed to explode. Deal? I'm down with that. I'm down with that. And we'll do the same kind of setup, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another integrated dynamics dude, and we're gonna check out this, uh, NBT extractor thing again, because he is just the coolest. He is just the coolest. Um... So let's see, we're going to want another variable store. And we're going to want another block reader. Where is the block reader? Block, 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 reader. There you are. And we're going to want another redstone writer. Okay. Um, and yeah, we're going to want our cables. We're going to want our variable cards and that stuff. And let's see if we can come up with a clever way to make this happen correctly-ish without blowing up my base. Blowing up base bad. I'm actually unsure in protected chunks. How protected are we, Protail? Um, I don't think that'll, that's far enough away that it won't. Sweet. That was not far enough away, holy cow. Um, I thought that was far enough away. It was not far enough away. Oh, yeah, no. Totally, totally destroys blocks. Protected, protected chunks and all. Doesn't care about how protected your chunks are. It's going to blow up the blocks. So we do want to be a little careful with this stuff. A little bit, right? So what we're going to have here is, again, the variable store right in the ground. And we will have cables and the block reader. Boop. Boop. And then we're going to get the variable for the NBT of the tile entity. Boop. And then we're probably going to want you. And you're going to do that. Hey, look at that. That's what we're talking about. Cool. Now, this one obviously has far less details um, than the Gormalis because it doesn't track, you know, the foods and it does, there's other things, right? It doesn't have a cooldown. It doesn't have a cooldown at all. Uh, so the only thing we care about is mana, right? So we can get the mana value of this guy and the output and boom, that's how much mana is currently in the flower, which is cool. Loving that. Um, let's get the display on here just so we can monitor that, right? Oh, I already have a display, actually, in my inventory. Boom, boom. And then this is the mana in the flower. And what I'm going to do... Where's my labeler here? We will call this flower mana. Write that dude. The NBT tag will go into the variable store. The flower mana will go in here. We'll set off a TNT explosion. There you go. Oh, haha, look at that. Our uh, mana pool filled up while we were setting this up. So there you go. See how it stopped feeding? Look at that. It stopped feeding because the, the mana in the flower is not zero. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. That's cool. I like that. Uh, so you know what I can do? I can do that. And now everybody's feeding again. 
Cool. So we'll just store some mana in the thing. I'm gonna have to turn off my magnet real quick. But how great is that? And now mana zero. Neat. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so you should be full enough. Full enough now. Cool, I don't need you in my inventory anymore. I'm just trying to keep my inventory somewhat organized. So now with you up and running, all we have to do is compare the mana value to zero and if it's zero, you're allowed to detonate the TNT. Now, here's my concern. How quickly will that update? <sighs> How quickly will that update? Um, well, there's a couple ways we could do this. What we could use is the world item exporter. I thought I already had one of those. Oh, I do. Good. I thought I had one. And that could go here. Not world item exporter, actually. My bad. No, I want the world block exporter. Okay. World block exporter. And then I want a item interface. Just resetting these values. Uh, and then I want a chest. Okay. And your job, sir, will be to hold the tiny TNT. And you will place blocks that are in this chest. Cool. Cool. So what we're going to have is, real quick, uh, a boolean... Um... No, we want an integer of zero. And then we're going to want a equals. And we're going to say if the flower mana, flower empty, equals zero, then the flower is empty. Flower empty true. And that's all we care about for the entropinium. Right? That's all we care about. So right now, flower empty is true. So if I set you to be a place there, boom. Right? Now I'm going to make it so that you only run... Every 10 ticks should be fine. I think we'll keep an eye on this. Oh boy. No, 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 no. See? That's what I was concerned about. That's what we didn't want to see happen. <laughs> Oh good, my entropinium's not dead. <laughs> That's what I was a little nervous about. Uh, I thought you were only running every 10 ticks, sir. I guess that was too frequent um, of an exporter mode. Uh, so we're going to have to make another one of those. Not the end of the world. Yes. See, that's exactly what I was trying to avoid. Accidental blow-ups. Uh, so you can go back. So we still have our flower empty category, so that's cool. Um, also, why did you explode? I hit the button. I guess the button was down long enough that it... I feel like the button stuck longer than it should have. So the reason I was using the button was to try to avoid that. So the reason I was using the button... World Block Exporter. Another one of those, please. Or, or no, actually, it uh, it did give me the world block explorer, so that's cool. And uh, so you that, okay, cool. So what we're gonna want to do is figure out a better way to be careful about that. So what I could do is make it so that this thing is only allowed to run every one hundred ticks. How long does it take for TNT to explode? It's less than five seconds, right? But if I set this condition to run every hundred ticks. It feels like it was less than five seconds, right? I think it's only every five seconds it checks. <laughs> so I've got an idea. T 
TNT turns into entities when it's about to explode. So if we get an entity leader here and we check what entities are in that block space, and then, you ready for this? We use count input type list, which is the list of entities. Because if you use the reader here, this is entities. This is the list of entities in the space. So if you have like multiple in there, right? Like we did this and this, it would show, yeah, if I was doing this in an intelligible way. See how it's showing them all? Okay, so that's the list of entities. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a count of the list of entities, okay? Okay, so take the entity list for the third time, type the word count, put that in there, list, input type to any, I just want the total amount. List, length, length, input type list. Length is what we want, output type integer, okay? So this is how many items are in the spot, right? Or how many TNTs are in the spot. So we want it to be zero, right? So we want to count how many items are in the spot. If we make it equal to zero, which we already have a zero integer, so we'll just do another um, equals, and we'll say the, the, the number of items in that space, or the number of exploding TNT in that space equals zero, then we're safe to place another TNT, right? So that means we're safe now. True. Not true, true, cool, all right? So now we're going to and that with the flower empty. So if the flower is empty and there's not already exploding TNT in that space, down, down like a clown. So we're gonna do and you and you means that we're ready to place, okay? So these guys go in here, you go there, right? Now watch, I'm gonna set you, ticks per operation can stay 10, that's fine. It shouldn't place another one there um, because it's gonna tell us how many entity count. Let's do, uh, this is the equals, this is the equals, this is the variable, this is the variable length. I'm gonna copy this. So you and you, copying variable length, and I'm gonna pop you in there. So watch, you ready? You ready for this, cool beans? It's not placing another block until it explodes. And the flower equals zero mana. The flower has mana in it because, because it filled up while I was testing this. <laughs> That's neat, it's actually working perfectly. <laughs> that is cool. Uh, let's get another mana tablet then. Uh, mana tablet, actually I need the living rock, which I totally am not prepared for. Um, Right, stone, and rats, because you know we need to do the rats thing, right? No! Don't go there, silly rats. Silly rats, almost drowning yourself. Okay, so let's just prove that this actually works correctly. It won't place until this flower is empty, right? Boom, he just placed. Right, we hit the button. He's not gonna place because there's an entity in that spot. 
He's not going to place because there's mana in the flower. Now there's no entity and there's no mana, so place. Boom. How cool is that? How cool is that? I like it. I like it a lot. As long as the TNT never moves out of this block space, which I'm hoping it wouldn't, it should be safe, right? Right, in theory? Is this dangerous to do right here? Yes. Is it dire, so he's gonna do it? Also yes. Now in theory, if this thing ever did destroy the terrain, what would happen is um, the block of redstone would be removed and probably the world item exporter. So this might be a little dangerous, but I like living on the edge, what can I say? What can I say? I'm a dangerous man living on the edge. All right, I think that's definitely wrapping up point for the episode. So for now, Double 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We've automated both those flowers in what I personally feel is a very fun way. I hope you guys are also under the of the opinion that that was cool. Uh, two neat ways to do things. Um, you know, I like it. So we'll come back next episode. We'll have lots of mana, right, from both our Gormulus and our Entropinium. And we'll come back next episode to uh, probably open the portal to Elfheim and start looking at the mythical Batania stuff. All right, guys, Devil 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.